Hello guys, Winston here. Way back in the day when I was looking for ways to secure thin pieces of stock to my CNC, I came across a video of a guy using masking tape and super glue to affix a piece of wood to his workbench. The idea is that you stick a piece of masking tape to your work surface and to your workpiece, and you put super glue in between. The tape will adhere to itself, and no glue residue will be left on your piece. People swore by it, people recommended it to me as an alternative to Nitto PO2 tape. The hype was very real. To me, it seemed like an inconvenient way to make what was essentially double-sided tape. But I always try and stay objective in my videos, and when I had a project that required me to cut thin brass stock, I figured I'd give the masking tape and super glue trick a shot. I was interested in two things. Number one, does it work? And number two, how's the cleanup? Does it peel off easily? Does it gunk up your cutter? What's it like relative to PO2 tape? Speaking of that comparison, I was also interested in masking tape's outright strength relative to the Nitto stuff. I have here a block of aluminum with PO2 on one side and masking tape on the other. I'm using a middle of the road masking tape by 3M and bonding it with just regular crazy glue. I'm going to use three square inches of tape on each side and test the block in tension and shear. The side that holds longer will be the winner. So pull test one and the winner is PO2. Let's do it again for science. PO2 again. How about in shear? I'm going to twist the entire assembly and see which side releases first. And it looks like masking tape is the big loser here, which doesn't surprise me at all. The Nitto brand tape subjectively feels tackier than the masking tape. So anyone who says this DIY double-sided tape is stronger than manufactured double-sided tape is wrong. But just because the ultimate strength of masking tape and superglue is lower than that of PO2 doesn't mean it won't be perfectly sufficient for work holding. Let's see how it performs in an actual machining operation. I had some 132nd inch sheets of brass stock I needed to cut some nameplates out of for a plaque project you'll see in a future video. These sheets are 12 by 6 inches and I got them on Amazon as opposed to McMaster because McMaster doesn't sell 360 brass this thin, only 260. Those numbers identify specific alloy compositions, 260 being more malleable and 360 being better for machining. I conveniently had some indexing pin holes from a different machining operation I could use to align my stock with the machine axes. I used three strips of masking tape on both sides of my brass plate and my shape Oko's bed. One strip each on the x-axis extents and one eyeball down the middle. On the shape Oko side, I brushed on a generous squiggle of CA glue on my masking tape. I like to use the stuff with a brush applicator because in my opinion, the bottles stay viable longer. I think it's a combination of the cap sealing better and the lack of a tip to get clogged. But for this application, it may not be the best choice. More on that later. On the brass side, I gave the masking tape a light misting with CA glue activator. Then I aligned my strips of tape and pressed the brass firmly down on the table. I've heard of people skipping the activator, opting instead to just wait a little longer for the CA glue to set. The choice is up to you since I don't think it significantly changes the effectiveness of the work holding method. I will say that CA activator is very noxious stuff. It vaporizes easily, which means not only will you smell it quite strongly if you're not in a well ventilated space, but it'll also try and evaporate right out of the spray bottle, so keep it capped if you can, or even bagged. To cut my brass, I'm using an 8th inch ZRN coated end mill. Using a 1 16th inch end mill would have resulted in a smaller kerf and lower cutting forces, but I'm not here to go easy on this work holding method. I'd rather find the upper bound of its capabilities. I'm going with an 8 thou depth of cut, which in my opinion is pretty safe for full engagement cuts but towards the end of my run, I was accidentally cutting deeper. I forgot to machine level my MDF face and the back was a few thou higher than the front. This meant the first pass of each nameplate would get deeper and deeper as I went. My cutting parameters were all calculated assuming a 10,000 RPM spindle speed, but because of the increasing resistance as my cuts progressed, I ended up bumping up the speed of my router as needed. My feed rate was about 14 inches per minute. With the exception of one nameplate on the first batch, everything worked remarkably well. The one failure I did have was due to insufficient CA glue being used on the masking tape. This is where I think the nozzle tipped glue applicators have an advantage over the brush, because you can put down a visible bead of glue very quickly. Once I figured out the right amount of glue to use, I was able to get my success rate up to 100%. Part removal was uneventful, just pull your part off the table and peel off the tape. Now, because I'd completely cut through my tape in some points, I could fully assess the impact of masking tape's adhesive on my end mill. There was definitely some adhesive residue left on the cutter, masking tape isn't magical, but the amount and the tenacity of the bond was quite manageable. Easier cleanup than PO2 for sure. So taking it back to my two original questions, does it work and is it easy to clean up? I would say yes on both counts. 
It's a little slower than double-sided tape to set up, but really not that much more of an inconvenience. I wouldn't be opposed to using this technique again for the right project. As for my nameplates, I gave them a quick deburr, engraving, and lacquer coating, and then they were off to integrate with the bigger overall project. And that's all I have for this video. Before I go, I just want to say that I'm going to be at WorkbenchCon in Atlanta this February, furiously taking notes on content creation from a bunch of really cool people. Let me know if you're going to be there, it'd be great to meet up. And for my 7 top Patreon supporters, if you want to meet up afterwards, first round is on me. I was actually serious about that reward tier. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC project in a week or two.